clearly. <laughs> so tell everybody why, please. Okay. So this is, wait, hold on. Let me set this up, okay? I got to set it up. Yes. yes. I'm bringing you my own tea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my god in the meantime let me see where, where is it man okay i'm gonna set it up hold on oh we live on facebook oh are we we is we nice is. it's time for wow, wow, wow. what's what affecting is? us so before we get on to our wow, well, um, I don't know if you did already, but I'm going to jump in again and I'm going to say it again since we're here now. Welcome, 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 everybody. Hello, hello, hello. It is so wonderful to see you all. Well, we're not seeing you because we're on the radio. But for those of you who might be seeing us, if you're on our Let's Connect Facebook Live page right now, then you are seeing us, right? So what we're saying is welcome everybody in Radio Land. Welcome everybody in our Facebook land. We're so happy that you decided to join us today on another wonderful Monday. I don't know how wonderful except for Reese, because clearly Reese is in a wonderful mood. Yes, honey. <laughs> <laughs> but we just wanna say from Carol and from Reese, Welcome to Let's Connect, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. Go higher. <laughs> that wasn't it, girl. <laughs> but you tried, though. You got points. On, okay. <laughs> you got points for trying. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So yes 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 um and i'm sorry i interrupted your drop that you did if you could run that back again for us I was it's time for wow. Wow, wow, wow what's affecting us what is affecting us indeed what it's more like what is not affecting us right but this week's what's affecting us is about me <laughs> i'm affecting me you're affecting you. <laughs> so if anybody knows, we always talk about me falling asleep. I'm falling asleep talking to Carol on the phone. She hear me snoring. Yes. All that good stuff. I'm I'm at work and I'm like falling, like looking at the screen. And next thing you know, I'm nearly falling off the chair and all that good stuff. So that was due to me having sleep apnea, right? Say it again. Say it slowly so everybody can hear you. That was due to me having a condition, a sleeping condition called sleep apnea. Ah. Apnea is when you're sleeping in the middle of the night and you wake up like four or five times. You stop breathing. You can't breathe, basically. Weight affects it. You know, that's a number one thing, as you know. You know we all know I'm chubby, which I need to lose this weight. But <laughs> in the time, this is very dangerous. I had no idea that it's something that you have heart disease, stroke. It will cause all these major, you know, illnesses. Mm -hmm. And um, and uh, the snoring part, oh, Lord, we don't want to go there. It's not cute. Okay. Mm -hmm. So one, I, and and I, I know eventually we're going to do a show on sleep apnea because there's a lot of people that have this disorder. So definitely we're going to cover that in depth one, one of the shows. But I was told that I can manage it with a CPAP machine. Okay. Machine. What is that? I can't fully explain it. All I know is a machine that you hook up to in the nighttime and it help you breathe and the snoring stop. Okay. But, but the machine ain't cute. <laughs> Picture this. What do you mean it ain't cute? Is it like a big bulky thing? All right. We, we going to find a CPAP, CPAP 
and um show the, the people only thing i know about it and i've heard about a cpap machine is that you've got to make sure you clean it like every day or something to that effect yeah like, you have you've got to be so careful with it because it has I to be clean the oxygen ma uh, oxygen mask that they like when you go to the hospital and they put that oxygen thing over your nose yeah just picture that oh i'm gonna i'm gonna pull up one so we can see not mine that mine that i have is is not really bulky or anything because they have really changed with the time like as time i mean mm -hmm. like awful but basically and this is not the one i have just so y'all can don't be laughing at me this is not but it's one. similar to that it's that, that give you an idea of what it is. So I'm going to share my screen so y'all can see what I, the contraptions that I be using. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you see it? This is what it looks like. Oh, uh, wow. Okay. Not mine, not mine, but you have different styles. But this is basically what it looks like. That you. This is the most important thing right here. I'm not a person that sleeps on my back, so you have to sleep on your back with this thing. No, you can sleep on your side. You can. But you to sleep on your side doesn't it like squeeze your face or your ears oh, or something. Your the 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 piece that's <laughs> on your nose is the most important. So once your nose is free to you know your head, you fix your head to a point where, you know. Uh, listen well listen like you said people who have this condition you do whatever you gotta do so what you gotta do to um to, to survive to sleep to get rid of this right. get over this condition i get it i get it so let i was me just asking because it looks kind of bulky all right so let me tell you this now so i got this i've been waiting since january to get this because you have to do a sleep study you have to do all that for them to, to, to determine what is it that you need and how they're going to do the measurements and the, the, it's a whole bunch of things. Okay. So I got this machine here delivered by a sexy delivery girl. <laughs> okay. They take it to you and they show you how to girl. Can I tell you, I was getting my flirt on with this man. Mm. And so which, wait, wait. So your cougar is alive and well. Oh God! I'm the tourism is alive and well, girl. Honey, honey, <laughs> honey. So the cougar is back. The cougar did not hang up her. Um, the, the cougar was in retirement. She was. On I a remember the cougar was in retirement, but clearly the it cougar does. has been. I was out of retirement. I was in retirement, and then for some reason, it's coming back out like it's peeking its way out, like. Oh, not ready to retire yet but anyway so he you know walked me through the steps and everything and you know how to clean it how to fit it and everything child when i tell you i got the best sleep in years because remember i told you that one when i was driving to grandma i was actually naughty like swerving on the street i remember did you have to pull over or something too pull over three times to sleep wow. to wow. for a three hour trip <laughs> only three hours and i had to pull over hey anna what's popping lady oh my goodness oh she's no anna just came on so hi anna so i'm telling you i got the girl let me tell you how good it was you would think that i had sex excuse me i had to go there Wait a minute. I went there. It was I was a family there. show at six o'clock in the evening. Sex is good. Sex is a, not a bad word. <laughs> okay. But I just, didn't say that. It's a family just, show. Just to give the people. trying to tell the kids and them about this. They can go figure that out themselves. I had to go there. Sorry. Something. I had to go there. <laughs> it felt. And I've been on, like, you think I'm on speed. The energy that I have. Let me tell you, it is real how this thing makes you lazy, fatigued, irritable, moody. 
you got Anna cracking up right now. I don't know. I don't have no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. You know, I got to keep it real. I got to need to change the name of this show. I know. What, what are you proposing now, Reese? <laughs> okay. Wait. I don't want to propose it for the name of this show. But I'm <laughs> thank God for the CPAP machine because, as you can tell too, I'm, yeah, it's like you usually around this time, I'm and our friends know. Our yeah. friends know. So let's just talk with our friends right now y'all know folks who've joined us and been joining us you all know that Reese, half the time when she come on here in the evening she's ready to fall asleep one time she actually almost fell asleep on me on this thing and i'm like wait a minute you need to wake your behind up now <laughs> you know how many people i'm on the phone and it is andrea andrea they just hit i'm just no, but i remember you fell asleep on me before though like straight up fell asleep on me and i'm hearing snoring and all that good stuff i'm like wait a minute this chick did not fall asleep on me yes she did and you sent me pictures of you at work typing the letter z and the computer is ridiculous <laughs> but you did that on the radio before and i'm like Reese, i wish wake I up I wish I could find that picture and show people that we're not lying about disease. And so for you now, when I, when when you came on and you're like, "Oh, girl, oh, oh, I got this. I'm doing this." I'm like, "Wait a minute, who is this person? I you must have had, you know, the cougar activities recently." No, no, that's the thing. I didn't even have any. Well, well, at least you're talking about it. So I guess you you're awake. <laughs> She is awake. People are woke. <laughs> so no, no more excuses. Oh no. my goodness. But I am glad that it worked because I felt really bad for you. <laughs> Listen, when it came, everybody was, it was like a party. Because I used to go into, I go into work like this. Didn't sleep again, huh? And I'm like, for real. It's like, but that's not the thing. You were sleeping. You were sleeping. It's just, I don't know why it's like your body wasn't recognizing it, right? Breath, you, your breathing stops. You, I'm literally, I literally have, there's no breath. Like I wow. stop breathing. Wow. So as I said, we are going to actually do a show on it. So, I mean, yeah. one of these is so people. Oh yeah, we, we definitely have to. And you have to tell us what you've been experiencing. I, 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 and if anybody out there also yes. experiences sleep apnea and you all have you know some near death experience like Reese snoring because the snoring ain't, first of all nobody i if we go like on a girl's trip or go somewhere i cannot share room with anybody it's to the Wait, point you snore that loud girl listen to, listen they, my kids when i travel they say mommy please don't fall asleep on the plane don't fall asleep because i'd be going it'd be crazy is crazy you you're can, one of those people it ain't cute honey it ain't cute oh I, my goodness that snore so loud you wake yourself up i wake, <laughs> I wake myself up and you know what's so funny my kids if they don't hear me snoring they run in the room to see if i'm okay oh well that makes sense because you yeah no, we're not if talking about Tired when people say, Oh, when I'm tired, I snore. We're talking about this chick got to go. I was I'm banned from having roommates when I go on trips. Cause I'll keep the asses up. Sorry, I'll keep them up. Excuse me. You're on a roll today, girl. You are like, you're on a roll. <laughs> you're wide awake. Oh my goodness. I didn't know that. I didn't know you snored that badly. Not cute. That nobody could be around you. But no. The first, the first night I used it, my son woke me up. I was late. Well, I guess you need to be a cougar, honey, because unless you are uh, with some really, really, with some pups, no, we ain't so gonna speak. <laughs> unless I, they're pups, I have standards. they can't I afford to be staying up and not getting any sleep. <laughs> okay, so that is why you need to be a cougar because you need pups. I need some energy. <laughs> Them old men can't manage me. They're going like, girl, oh. pups, literal pups. <laughs> Call them cubs. 
Thank you very much. Cubs. Cubs. Thank you. See, I don't know nothing about this, so I'm I'm just we trying to hang with you. Pups. We talk about cubs. We we talking about cubs. Okay, yeah. yes, because cougar and her cubs. Okay. Yes, thank so you. So you much. need some cubs who've got you know fresh, you know, energy and stuff. You are going to leave me alone? Okay. <laughs> you are going to leave me alone. But well, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for you, my dear. What else is going on in your world? Because you always have a lot going on. Other than this, I think this, this, no, nothing else. Oh my goodness. Tell me what's going on in your world. I, listen, I come here to get the tea from you. Oh, and okay. this is tea. I come here to get the tea. This ain't no chamomile you. tea. This is some good tea. That's some good tea, honey. You and your cubs, Miss Cougar and her cubs. Okay. I like it, but yeah, nothing, nothing really going on on my end of things. Um, listen, we're still hearing about the slap that was heard and seen around the world. I don't know who doesn't know about it. If you don't know about it, you might have been under a rock. About what? what you the, said? Slap, the slap oh, the that has been heard and seen all around the world. Yes. And I know we talked about this last week. But I mean... But it's still being talked about today with Will Smith slapping I, Chris Rock. It's sad. To me, I mean. And, you know, we talked about it last week. And, and I had said, listen, my, my stance still remains the same. I get it. It's, it's a, you know, and all of us have moments. We're humans. We right. have moments where we might, you know, we lose it a little bit. But that's where you have to be, unfortunately, as a celebrity, you got to pack your patience every day because that is just the nature of your existence. That's the nature of your world that you live in. And you've got to be even more patient than other people. And it's really sad for him that after all these years and years and years and years of everything that he's done to get to this point and he, that carefully cultivated image, you know, clean and shined up and polished up image all of a sudden it's like now it's kind of tarnished. You know, you know what thing is? As I said before, I don't condone it, right? Yes, he should pay the whatever he, if they're gonna arrest him, if they're gonna law, file a lawsuit, what ban him from whatever. He deserves the consequences. But to be canceled, if um, right. I don't think he needs to be canceled. I don't, I, I don't think, and everybody's hopping on that and hopping on that bandwagon, cancel him. And some people are saying that they were traumatized. I'm like, really traumatized? People are getting shot in the street all day, left and right. Getting this woman sitting on the subway, had a bag of poop smeared all in her face and in her hair and all this stuff. Now that poor woman is traumatized. You know, what are you all talking about? No you home in your you could do 99 good things and the one mistake because we're not human for some reason we all ain't human we don't make mistakes because everybody's perfect and the one mistake you make does wipe out he has never been in any um what should i say controversy like this before it, right. uh, not even his songs it's unfortunate you know and that's how as human beings I, that's our lives you that one little thing that you do can right. wipe everything out now like i said i do not condone hitting and violence and all that stuff because what are you teaching even younger people or even just other people to say okay. what if everybody starts doing that so that is wrong and i'm gonna say it again what i said last week and i'll say it again this week um he should have handled it backstage, yes. face to face, or if he, when it's his turn, he gets up on the mic since it was done publicly right. to him. When you get to the mic without the cussing and That's the expletives it. and all that stuff, yes. you go up there and you say, um, let me check you right now. Okay. Cause this is not going to happen today. You know, so do it that way. But when you start using your fists and using your, you know, because we teach our children, right? I know for me and my kid, we've always taught our kids, you know, don't put your hands on anybody else. Yes. And if anybody stepped to you, put your hands on you, then okay, that's, they just opened themselves up. Yeah. But, you know, but you don't put your hands on other people because you're opening yourself. What if Chris Rock had said, oh, yeah. How about we do this right now? 
It would be a tumble. It you would... know, what if he had just, he, like many other people would have just reacted and done that back. And then that would have been a, such a huge, it would have been even worse. So that's why I feel bad for him, but he has to deal with these consequences right now. And he's going to have to deal with it, unfortunately. Yeah. And, and, and as I said, but I still rock for him. I still love Will Smith. Of he course. Does, uh, he just made a poor choice. It was, you know, the, you know that term temporary insanity. That <laughs> he was temporarily insane. Temporarily insane. But he oh made, my goodness. He has to, well, he's gonna well, have to deal with his consequences. I, I and for him, and that's my boy right there. He'll so, be back. He will. He is the comeback kid. He'll be back. And everybody loves a comeback kid. So yeah. He'll be back. He'll be back. He just has to sit this one out and deal with whatever comes his way. Somebody else. Drama is going to come soon. So he he got. Yeah, he's going to have to do. And he started by apologizing and, and all and of he, that. And he actually um, resigned from the Oscars. Yeah, the Academy. The Academy. So, you yeah. know, I'm, it, it really sad to see when you work hard. You work hard, you work hard, and then this one thing does. But hopefully we will be a forgiving people and eventually, you know, let him ride it out, pay his consequences, and support him afterwards because people are human and they make mistakes. So and It's just so funny because, you know, there are a whole lot of haters and stuff too that, that this man who's worked his way all the way to where he is right now to his highest pinnacle, you know, and want to see him knocked off and want to see him knocked down. And I feel like there are a whole lot of those people who might be We're always gonna have them, Carol. I realize that we're yeah. always gonna have those naysayers. It's unfortunate. Uh -huh. but we're <clears throat> gonna have naysayers. It's just something that we have to live with and just deal with. Yeah. But he'll be back. He's yes. extremely talented. Um, so you know, he'll be back. Everybody have their moments. This was his. <laughs> this was his by far. Oh. So let's keep on rolling. You know what I heard? Um, you heard I several, no, several people sent me this video and uh, a lot of people may not be aware of it, oh. but it is a video. I want to mention it because one, I am a woman. Two, I am Jamaican. And so is this amazing woman that I want to mention. And so many people sent this video to me that I have to, I have to point it out, right? Her name is Georgia Crawford Williams. Okay. All right. She's a consultant sociologist and university lecturer. All right. And she actually just created these lifesavers wipes. Okay. Yeah. Save so, yeah, her. She created these, well, her and, and, and her team, created this well she's one of the instrumental people in developing this lifesavers wipes and it just won the best new product award globally okay, okay for 2019 to 2021 best new product globally when you just said won this award wipes huh you said wipes wipes like you wipe your derriere with wipes, like baby wipes and sanitary wipes and stuff like that. She created wipes, but these wipes actually can tell if you're unwell. So it's the it's wipes for, you know, a lot of times, especially in the black and brown communities, we struggle with diabetes. Uh -huh. Struggle, struggle. I mean, that struggle is real. Yeah. Let me tell you, honey. Diabetes is an issue in the black and brown communities, very prevalent. And it affects your eyesight. It affects everything, your teeth, yeah. your, your, your limbs, everything. So this wipe can actually, once you use it, it can actually tell it what your um, glucose level is. By wiping? Oh, yes. Yes. Wow. And this product won the award, the Idea Achievement Award, the best new product globally for 2019 to 2021. This Jamaican lady, amazing woman, and I've listened to her speak. And it's just, it's wonderful. And I just wanted to shout that out because I think it's wonderful. And you guys, please go look her up. Okay, her name is Georgia Crawford Williams. 
look it up, pop it into Google. You will see her video where she's talking about um, the achievement award that she just won for these um, Lifesavers wipes. I thought it was wonderful and I just wanted to highlight it. And I know that we are broadcasting internationally. Our, uh, our listeners are from all over the world. We have people listening in Jamaica, just like all the states here in the US. We have people listening. We have other people listening um, in, in other Caribbean islands who have been on this show as well. So yeah. you all, okay, look up this product and support this woman. I thought it was amazing. Kudos. Support, support, support. Yes. That is awesome. Oh, yeah. I just had to mention that. So, Miss Racy, while we're rolling along, that was my wow that I wanted to um, point out mm -hmm. this week. What's affecting us? So, what what are we doing today my dear today what are we doing today just how you with the people one more thing i want to say about my nick cannon the people are trying to save his show everybody, really yeah i mean everybody's so upset that his show and it was such a feel-good show so who who show because sometimes i can't hear you that clearly oh, so nick cannon okay my baby daddy <laughs> your your baby daddy. Oh boy, you're like what? Your baby number what? Nine, daddy? It, baby mama baby number mama nine. baby mama number nine. Okay, yes. <laughs> baby number nine, mama. Okay. His show I watch it. His show is very enlightening. I love it. Yes, it is. So enlightening. Yes. So I really hope that he goes the, that some other um some other station picks him up you know and so um, why do you say the people are trying to save his uh, show what's been happening on the cuz i'm on the group on his page his his um what do i call it the show's page okay everybody that they want to do a petition they want a petition why do you know they when is it supposed to end do you know may in may okay that's coming up very soon Yes. Yeah, I do like his show. And I said this before as well about Nick Cannon. He's such a personable guy. Yes, he is. I really like him. And I feel like he's so versatile. Yes. That he actually, he can talk to anybody, <laughs> you know, and you put him in any situation and he looks comfortable. Mm -hmm. And he puts, one of the big things about a, a host of a show is you need to be able to put people at ease. You know, and Nick Cannon has that ability to sure. put people at ease. Yes. And yeah. do you know what I like about him? He is very transparent. Nothing that you throw at him, he doesn't like back away from it or shy away. He's open and he tells you straight up. Yeah. I need to be celibate straight up. I need cause it. I need to fix myself. I need this is what happened. I was wrong to do that. He is open and I love that. You know, people may think that he's telling too much of his business, but well, it, that was um Will Smith and Jada's problem too, and see how that worked out for them. So I don't know about this whole telling all your business. Sometimes, sometimes telling people your story helps them. You may people may think, oh, you're talking about your business too much, but maybe somebody out Some there things can be left okay inside your home some things are private you don't yes. need to put everything out to the world people don't have to all be all up in your business like that i'm good they can be all up in mine i don't have no life <laughs> anyway so you know if i can't reach out to somebody with some crap that i'm doing i want to thank you and for the people mm -hmm. i want to help there are some things that can be left behind closed doors leave it in your house that's your personal business nobody wants to hear about every single dirty laundry nobody that, wants to see all your dirty laundry yeah, hanging on the yeah, line oh, dirty laundry they got their teeth what? you know all of their laundry just hanging out front <laughs> that's that's like, wait a minute. hey tweety bird hey tweety that's my little sister there listening i know she's back she on there acting the fool again <laughs> always 
I'm such a big, I'm such a, I said it's such a good example for my siblings. I'm the oldest one. And this is what they have as an example. Mm, mm, I don't know if that's good. It's good. Tweety, is it good, Tweety, that I'm your big sister? <laughs> <laughs> they say, yes, yes, yes. So today's show, I'm so happy. Can you believe it that a year ago we actually did the show? And I'm so happy that um, we're doing it again. It's autism month. April yeah. is autism month. We what actually month? it was more than a year ago. More than, oh yeah. We it was November of 2020. That we did okay. Time is flying, honey. This is 2022. 20 we're now in April of 2022. I forgot. How could I forget? Today's show is brought to us by Stay Cool AC. We finally got a sponsor for our show. So we have Stay Cool AC that's based out of um, Coral Springs, Florida. They are a um, new company that's coming on board and they are um, sponsoring the show today. And All we right. Out, out to, um, I'll give you more details as we go along in, the, in our show with contact information and all. All right. So big up to Stephen from Stay Cool AC. So for all you Floridians, you know we can't do without that AC during the, especially the summer. Oh my goodness! Let me tell you, stay. You know it's funny because I've been to Florida several times, and that was like one of my primary vacation spots for multiple years, different places: Miami, Fort Lauderdale, da 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 da. I was hopping around, loved it. However, when I got to Florida, uh huh. It was hot. You know how people say, oh, Florida is this and it's great. And it did it. Did. I thought I was going to die when I got to Florida. And, like, and up north have a different type of heat. At it's least a different little, type of heat. Listen, we have at least we have a little cool breeze with the trees and stuff. Y'all know how yes, to that right? is true. But it was still hot. It yes. was so hot. I was so happy whenever we had to get back in the car or get in, uh, get in a building or something just to cool down because it, it was brutal, especially in the July, June, July. Oh girl. Yes. And that's where, that's where I was. And I was there in the summertime. But let me ask you this. How the hell did we survive in Jamaica without AC? Because well, when that, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. I Cause we I, don't, from what I recall, and this has been a while ago now, but it's a diff, it that is also a different type of heat. And in Jamaica, we're an island surrounded by water, right? And we're just plopped in the middle of water. So the breeze that comes in off the water, I remember where my house was also, I lived by a, this big river. The river, yes. Yes. So it was just breeze and, you know, we had a spring there, a nice spring coming out the mountains. I was in the I country. Had no spring back there, river. We had a spring, honey. That's how we had, we drank spring water. Let me tell you, we had nice, cool spring water. I remember there were times when we would want to um, go bathe and stuff, and we, but we wouldn't bathe at the top and stuff like that because, we, you know, that's where you get the good water to drink. But in the front, you know, area where you had, it was deep enough and we would go bathe in the springs and yeah, boy, fresh water. It was freezing cold. I'm telling you now, you would never catch me in no cold water like that. <laughs> you know, but funny enough, when I go to Jamaica, I love the cold water. I have to nope. pray first and, and gear up myself for it, but I love to feel that cold water. No, mm -mm, mm -mm. or, or when, you know, we used to go to school, you remember we used to go to school and we were younger and, you know, if you didn't shower like the night before and your parents say you better go take a shower and we were in the country, I was in the country. So sometimes we'd have to, you know, go outside and stuff and, and take the shower and it was cold because it's early morning, like what, five thirty, six o'clock in the morning. <laughs> No, sir. To get up to the school? Yes, because we lived far away. The school was far. We had to take the bus and all of that. School for where I live, I see the school for where I live. So I, oh, five minutes yeah, that I walk. No. So that's 
No, we had a long ride on the bus. I forget. Yeah, because you, you're from Castleton. So yeah. So yeah. it you early morning. And if you're washing up early in the morning, girl. Wipe up. You wash up on your wipe up. Wow, what the hell that is that water is cold because my mom is like, you better wash. <laughs> <laughs> I've never so let, me tell you, let me give you this joke. When I was, I hope my kid isn't listening because my kid be trying to pull that on me too. <laughs> she be trying to pull it right when i was younger dad i know you listen to this show <laughs> <laughs> and i'm telling on myself right now right that daddy, man. i know you listen to this show <laughs> and mom you listen to my mom would be listening last week my mom was like wait what time is the show on wait so my, my dad i i know you might be listening right now and I'm going to tell my business, but it's okay because my dad already knows. So I was staying with my dad. My dad was a teacher. And I was staying with my dad at the time. Um, and my dad said, go take a shower. This was in the morning before school. <laughs> said, go take a shower. <laughs> so I go to the bathroom. I'm like, shower what? Hey, sh <laughs> shower what? I mean, I was maybe like 13 or something, just like my kid. I don't and, that. You know, I'm not taking no shower. It's too cold for all that mess. So I take the water <laughs> and put it in the water. <laughs> oh my God. Confession is good for the soul. Confession. You got me going. See, I usually don't talk about myself, but now you got me telling my business to the yeah. world. <laughs> I want to know that you didn't want to bathe to go to school. <laughs> See, my dad, I didn't know my dad, no, because he told my mom. <laughs> I put water on my back. I'm like, yeah, I showered. Now I see my kid doing the same thing. I'm like, been there, done that, honey. Uh, I know you didn't watch. <laughs> man. Yeah, I'll that never forget bad. that. Oh, man. So, daddy, yeah, you put up with me. <laughs> and he acted like he didn't know, and he knew. Yep, they know. They know. <laughs> yes. Anyways, I forget what I was talking about. Um, from autism to not bathing. Mm, girl, okay. you got me off topic, making a fool of myself I on this air all the time. Like, <laughs> I mean, I know I have my issues, but golly. <laughs> I mean, I'm always getting blamed for something. You know, this was my TMI today, everybody. That ain't going to happen no more. Not TMI. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes, Tweet, you're right. It's a different type of heat in Jamaica. Mm. That's what we were talking about. Yeah, the Tweet says it's a different type of heat in Jamaica. And it's true, because we had that nice... I was from the country, you know, underneath the trees. It's that nice... That's where, where I'm from, there we on a hill in the shade. Yeah, my house was on a hill too. On a hill, that big old mango tree. So we have that, as you say, that cool, that breeze from the ocean coming. Oh, yeah, it's very different. It's very different from here, where it's just hot, and New York City just hot. It's the concrete, just hot. Concrete, bloody concrete jungle. It's just heat. <laughs> when it gets hot, it's just hot. Yes. Definitely. But yeah, uh, honestly, Florida is, um, you got the water there too, but it was still hot. That's the point I was making it. To me, it was still very, 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 very hot and muggy. Yeah. So that's why, so, that's why when your AC break, that's called Steven and he built there. There you go. That's what we were talking about, Steven. We we, from, from AC to, from AC to showers. I don't know. That's what happens when you listen to the to to to, to the, the Let's Connect radio show. Yes. And these two women who are cutting it up on here. That's what that's what happens. So you call what's the name of the AC company? Stay cool. Stay cool. That's right. So if you get hot and you need your make sure you're checking, you know, summer is coming up now. So make sure you're checking your systems and all of that and make sure if you don't have your AC system set up yet. You and call stay cool. Information will be on our page, so you can always refer to that. All right, and we'll be talking about stay cool throughout the show because they are our sponsors. Yes. All right, Miss Reese, let's run our drop. 
and let's keep it moving. Let's keep it. What? It's now time for our topic of the day. Boy, on a pussy, sir. Pussy. Our topic of the day today. What is it, Reese? Tell everybody. We're talking about autism today, which yes. is Autism Awareness Month. When is it? Uh, April. Actually, Autism Day was the fourth. No, not the fourth. Sorry, the second. But April is the awareness. The, yes, the month of April is um, Autism Awareness Month. So, you know, we, we like to touch on topics. If you guys don't know already, that's relevant and that we feel um, is relevant to all of us, you know, as well as other fun topics. But definitely we like to chat about stuff that's relevant and things that we feel can help you, you know, and us in life. So we decided to chat about autism awareness. Yes, definitely. And Yes. So if you guys don't realize, let me remind you, we actually did a show before. We had a full episode on autism before. And we did that. If, if you're looking at our Facebook page, you know, we would love for you guys to go out there because right now we're just revisiting the topic this week. And um, to let you guys know that we had presented a wealth of information before in our topic, we did it in November 11th of 2020. So November 11th, 2020, go on to our Facebook page and go down and all of our episodes are labeled and you'll see the November 11th, 2020 episode that la that's labeled autism, where we covered it extensively and we had some amazing guests on the show, experts in the field that went into detail about autism. We had Stephanie Flamini from autismnewjersey.org um, and she came in and gave us so much information. We had our amazing guest Norberto who had two sons that are autistic and oh, he was amazing. And he was just telling us from the parents' perspective, you know, what he's going through, what he's experiencing. And he was so open and honest with us that um, we invited him to come back this week. Um, hopefully he'll join us and chat with us tonight about, give us a nice little update on what's been happening from his perspective as a parent with his two adult sons. Okay. So... Reese, do you have, we, we're going to just touch on, remind everybody what autism is and um, where they can find the link and we'll play, maybe we'll play a couple of little clips, right? What do you say? Yeah, we can do that. But in the meantime, we can, you know, you know what is, is uh, and what I learned the last time was I always thought that autism was in boys you know i've never heard i never heard of a girl having autism it was mostly guys that little boys right and i learned that yes girls have it too i you know i have a friend that um heard she has a daughter that is autistic you know so yes um yeah. and you know it's funny because when i i did take a look <clears throat> Um, at the episode that we did on autism, and you did ask that question as well of the experts about whether, you know, it's more prevalent in boys than girls. And they did say, yeah, it's more prevalent in boys than in girls. But of course, obviously, girls do have autism as well. Right. What's and, that? No, no, no. Yes, I'm, I'm hearing what you said. I just opened the the um say but what right now i'm just going to um play a little bit of what we of our past show that we had um, so what part are you going to play let's start with um first of all we'll just remind everybody before you play that uh, we'll just remind everybody that autism 
all right, for those who don't know. And what we did before is um, autism awareness is just to bring awareness to the topic because obviously there's no cure. There's no such thing. So we're not telling you that, you know, you should go out and find this cure and the doctor is going to cure you and this and that. It's for solely for the purpose of awareness. And it usually starts early is what I remember our expert Stephanie Flamini who came on and talked about it and she was on our previous show. So when you go out, you'll hear her talk about it in depth. Um, it starts early between like zero and three years old. Okay, okay, is what she had mentioned. It starts early. So her point that she was really trying to drive home at the time I recall was, you know, for parents, we know our kids more than anybody else. So we know what we should look for. And if you're not really certain of what you should be looking for, there are some signs um, that she talked about, some early warning signs of autism. And I just wanna preface that by saying autism, it's not an illness, everybody, okay? Okay, according to the Centers for Disease, the CDC, mm -hmm. saying that the autism spectrum disorder ASD is a deve developmental disability caused by differences in the brain. Exactly. <clears throat> ASD have a known difference such as a genetic condition, right? And they said also that people with ASD may behave, communicate, interact, and learn in ways that are different from other people. Right. So when I hear that, I remember, you remember the movie Rain Man? Yes, it, uh, it was um, Tom Cruise and I forgot the guy, Dustin Hoffman, and he had autism, but he was good with numbers. Yeah, and for some reason they said that autistic children are good with numbers. Well, not all of them, some of them, and it's maybe not just numbers, but <clears throat> intellect. So it could be there are some of them who may be excellent at spelling, spelling B champions. And they're like, you know, or they're excellent in physics or they're excellent, you know, so they have their area. And this is one of the things when you look back at the episode, um, our expert, Stephanie Flam Flamini, that when she came on and she talked about this, she talked about the fact that there are some of them, like you said, Reese, that they focus on that area. It could be math. It could be science, it could be physics, it could be, but the issue is that is all they focus on. So that's why they become like what you call a savant. You know, they're so smart in that one particular area, but it's all they, they care about and it's all they focus on because nobody, I mean, there's nothing else that they, they care about. And then they don't I care about anything else. Yeah, and then I see um, sometimes they they class um, some of them nonverbal, like they don't speak. Mm -hmm. you know, and it's it's a whole bunch of like another side. They have problems with social communication. Yes, so they have issues with um, um, communication skills, um, relationships, self regulation some of them completely lack social skills yep. or you know? repetitive behaviors. Right? Yes. Right. So it's really just that their brain works differently. So you and I, what we're pointing out right now and just repeating to everybody, autism, it's not a disease. It's not an illness, you know, or a disease. It's really just that their brain works differently. Right. And there's no medical test Everything that, yeah, there's no medical test to determine, oh, they're going to have autism or like a blood test or anything like that, according right. to, you right. know, just basically you're observing your child and their development and then, okay, something doesn't seem right or something is off. Then you, that's how you bring them in and they do run tests and, you know. Yeah. And our, our guest, um, Norberto, who I was hoping would be able to join us tonight. Um, he, the last time he talked about his sons and one of them he mentioned, um, he stated that at, at first they thought his, he, him and his wife 
thought that their son was deaf. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, we thought he was deaf because they would go up close to him and yell, scream in his ear, and he wouldn't even flinch. He wouldn't respond. He wouldn't flinch. He didn't acknowledge any of that. So they thought he was deaf. He wasn't deaf. Right. It's just, it's a different way of communicating. It just, it, that did not reach him. And, so, and people with autism, does it make them, um, what should I say? It's not that they can't go through life normally. Because now, I don't know if you're aware of, do you know Holly Pete? Robin? Yes. Yeah. Her eldest son has he's autistic uh, okay. and she she has always been active like in the that's how i kind of knew of it and and got into it you know and her son like he she thought that he was going to be one way when they found out he was autistic and you know that first thing like oh my god he's going to be dependent on me for the rest of my life he's going to be slow and whatever and he is modeling and he's doing he got his first job and he's doing things that he, to me he's normal but as you said it's his brain that they think different you know yeah and and tweet tweety is right Reese. while you you know we we talk about that if you could pull up um on our previous episode like around 50 seconds where stephanie flamini was talking about the early signs so it's from like 50 seconds to like the three minute mark all right she was yeah, you can pull that up. Start at 50 seconds. But um, Tweety, you are so right. Because Tweet says boys are four times as more likely to be diagnosed with autism than girls. Okay. So thanks for the statistics, girl. And she says one out of 44 people in the world are diagnosed with autism. And there are over 7,000 students enrolled in Broward County public schools in florida well, that's a huge number education um um education and and in the education world she's you know so she's familiar and works with because i think when she started out first she was working with special i don't want to say special needs i tweety i don't know the word but she was working with mm -hmm. then so okay. she, very aware of all of that so i'm gonna That's awesome seven thousand students in broward county you know who are autistic and like she says that's why it's called a spectrum autism spectrum disorder because it's a wide variety of behaviors like we mentioned and let's see what Fl stephanie flamini our previous <laughs> expert has to say about it it's special needs all right hold on uh And here we go. Did you want me to go into any early signs of autism? Oh, yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so some early signs in autism, some signs that you're going to see in babies and toddlers, most commonly is they may appear to be somewhat disconnected from others. So what I mean by that is they might not be making eye contact or if they do, it's not sustained for long periods of time. Joint attention is a, another critical skill and often a red flag. I spent many years in early intervention and one of the first things I would do when I would enter the home and play with the child was while I'm playing with them with bubbles or a ball or a toy, or if I'm clapping my hands, are they really interested in sharing that experience with me? Are they referencing me, the toy, and making that somewhat connection through eye gaze shifts? For a lot of individuals with autism, many of them aren't as motivated intrinsically to have that social emotional reciprocity. So they may seem isolated in that sense. They may be more object focused. They also might not be responding to their name. Um, they may have difficulty communicating. So their, their expressive communication skills might be really delayed. As a result, they may engage in more tantrums, more behavioral challenges, because if we can't functionally communicate what we need or what we want or comment on something, a lot of times, especially when the individual is a toddler or young, they're going to use their body 
to communicate what their words can't say for them. Mm. Um, also have little imitate, little to no imitation skills. A lot of times I notice a lack of joint attention, a lack of responding to name and not strong communication skills. Those are typical prerequisite skills before spoken or functional language will occur. So a lot of those critical early years from birth to three are really promoting that social emotional connection, imitation, eye contact, because a lot of times those are those prerequisite skills that will have to occur or improve before communication skills are going to really take off. Okay. Um, Can I say something at this point? Okay, let's, oh, let's put a pin in there. A high step. Okay. So, yeah. So we just listened again to Stephanie Flamini um, from the Autism New Jersey and um, where she talked in, in depth um, about some of the early signs, you know, and she went a lot more in depth, like no eye contact, no, Im no imitation skills, no strong communication skills, you know, all the stuff that we talked about. And our other guest, Norberto, um, he was about to come in and talk about what I said before. He noticed that his son started at like age two. He discovered that um, he had autism you know, or they knew something was different, you know, and, and we, Stephanie also reminded us that 80% risk can be traced to inherited genes. So inherited genes, but at the same time, they, some can develop it after conception, after the child is born, after the child has been conceived, you know, you can, can develop that as well. So you just really want to pay attention to it. And Reese, you had actually asked, um, and the only reason I know this is not because my memory is so great, but <laughs> it's because I took a look at the episode again <laughs> and it was so much, it's jam packed with a lot of information. And I just want everybody to go out there and check out this information because if you have children and you, you're noticing something a little bit off or something a little bit different, you wanna go check this out, okay? Because we had the experts on who can tell you what you need to be paying attention to. But one of the things that Risi, you had asked about is whether there are other problems that the autistic um, children or folks may experience. And Stephanie did mention that approximately 40% suffer from insomnia, right? I don't know if you remember that, gastroenteritis, uh, you know, that those types of issues um, that they have. You asked about other common ailments okay. that they have. And she did answer and say that. So, um, I wanted to point that out. So they may have a lot more insomnia, gastro problems, and a couple more that she did mention in there. So those are things to look out for, which I didn't realize. So that was a great question that you had asked. And, and what we can do after the show, we can actually drop that, um, that, autism, that show that we did then and drop it again so people can actually watch it. Oh, yes. Yeah, we're going to drop the link. And um, when we post our videos out to YouTube, that's what we usually do. In the end screen, we include a tag for the previous episode, you know, because it's the same topic that we're talking about. So we're going to link it for everybody to, to be able to go back and see. If, you're, if they're watching this episode, they can see that. And we'll link this episode in the other one as well. So everybody can go out there and check it out because it's a wealth of information and it's so important. I love when we give out information that people actually need. Okay. I want to shout out to my cousin from Canada. Hey, Mark. He just tuned in. He just tuned in. So big up Canada. Big up, big up. We have a Canada Canadian listener. Absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. You can't say I'm a big up fam. <laughs> yes. So definitely, um, we'll definitely drop that link from the, the, the first show and stuff. But yeah, uh, and um, 
There's another thing I wanted to mention because, you know, this is what we're talking about, right? She was giving some advice to parents. So if we go at, um, when you pull, when you pull up the video again, Reese, at the 22 minute mark. 22 mark. Yeah, from 22 to like just 23 30 write that down from 22 minutes to 23 so just for like a minute and a half um where she's giving some advice to the parents and what they should do at right, 22 22 22 okay all right did i stop sharing All right, here we go. 22 to where? 22 minute mark to like 23.30. Why, your exact stuff? Yes. You know um, how we do, you know how, how, how I do, girl. Say that parents are their child, or is the expert on their child. So if they do a screening at a well visit and they still feel, my, my best advice is to always communicate your concerns. If you feel like something is off, if you feel like something's just not right, always share that concern because there's no medical test that can diagnose autism. And it's based on autism specific assessments and observations of the individual's behavior. And what they should do is communicate that with the pediatrician and say, I would like to be referred to a trained diagnostician. Usually it's going to be a neurologist, a psychologist, or a developmental pediatrician who will walk them through a more thorough identification tool. They'll ask them more detailed questions, and they may be able to recommend them specific services, whether they have autism or not. Maybe they have developmental delays in some of those areas that can be addressed. The earlier you work on it, the more equipped they'll be when they go to school. And you wanna make sure that if you feel that they are delayed with their communication skills or being able to follow directions or they're having environmental or sensory sensitivities, you, we want to make sure that we're trying to teach them early on those coping skills, those communication skills, those socially significant functional skills that are, are so critical, especially from birth to three. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, let's stick a pin in that again. And of course, we thank Stephanie for um, giving us those detailed, that detailed information um, again, and we're gonna link her information. So don't worry people. Um, there's a lot of information that um, is in that episode and we will give you all the links. She's from Autism New Jersey. So she's from the association that she's from is autismnewjersey.org. Now, when I say autismnewjersey.org, I know like Tweety is in Florida and stuff like that. There, We have people listening in the Caribbean right now. We've got people in all the different states in the US who are listening right now. So not to worry, just because I said autism New Jersey, it doesn't mean that you cannot get the services. You can click on their autismnewjersey.org and they will refer you to wherever you need to go. It's just one of the resources and they have so much resources yep. on their site. They have seminars and, and different workshops and conferences and speakers, different topics. So whatever it is about autism that affects your family or your loved ones, you can find the information there and they will refer you on and they will help you to find the resources wherever you live. So if you're not sure, and you just want to find out or you want to dip your toe in the water just to learn about it a little bit because you're afraid of telling the world or, or going to the doctor or something. Maybe you just want to start off by learning. Go to autismnewjersey.org and look around, ask them questions. They will answer you. But all the information is on our Let's Connect Facebook page in the autism episode, okay? All the information is there. So, we, we have a special guest tonight. Yes. And we wanna welcome him back, Reese. 
Yes. Because he was here before talking about <laughs> autism. He was here before and we really enjoyed the conversation we had with him. So Norberto, <laughs> welcome. Oh, thank you. I was wondering who was you, you were talking about. <laughs> we're talking about you. <laughs> How are you? Hi, everybody. We are good. How are you? I'm okay. As always, uh, busy in some way or form. Yeah, I must apologize. I had gotten into something with my sons, both on the autism spectrum. Yes. I completely forgot about this thing. And my girlfriend says to me, hey, what is the podcast thing? I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the phone? Oh. And I'm texting you going, uh, hello, are you coming on? <laughs> and he's like, oh, my God, I forgot. But listen. <laughs> We no apology necessary. You have two autistic sons and I applaud you. You know, I admire you so much because there's a lot you. that you have to do for them. And I, you shared so much information with us last time. So we don't have a lot of time right now, but I'm so glad that you stopped in. So give us a quick update on how your sons are doing today. I'm really curious about how they've been doing in this whole pandemic it's been two years right yeah, it was two yes. years yes oh, so for an autistic child or son or grown-up or an autistic individual what does that mean what has that meant to your sons well um programs that they could have attended in person naturally were suspended right so the idea was how especially in the, in the in the thick of it, it was like, how do we get them outside, let off some steam, and yet not expose ourselves? Right. So we, we worked that out, you know, setting on the ferry in the off hours, you know, just go somewhere where, where there's not a lot of people. Um, they did well, uh, especially my youngest, because he could not go, <coughs> excuse me, Ramiro, just as a, a, a recap, Ramiro is my youngest, he is 24, and he is autistic and developmentally delayed. Okay. Oh, excuse me. So mentally, he's kind of like around four. Uh, my oldest, he'll be 27 this month. And I put him around maybe 15, 16. So uh, recently, uh, the, the day had program opened up, and Ramiro just picked up right where he left off. Oh, okay. So we got him on the bus, going there, attending the sessions. Um, a lot of that I attribute, I was blessed. Um, I met a lady, and she's very good with my sons. That's, That's wonderful. So she did a lot of work with them. Um, my home, well, basically my home was unbalanced. Ian needs yang. You know, we got three guys in here. Yeah. You yeah. know, so we, you know, we're missing the feminine part. So that's why when they was in the respite worker, I always stress she must be female. Wow. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can understand that. But gee, that's difficult, right? Just realistically speaking, you know, and I'm so glad that you met someone who was able and willing to take on the challenge. There you go. Not too many women, especially at our age, at my age, they would, no, they would not, they wouldn't uh, want to get on this adventure. Yeah, <laughs> an adventure indeed. Yes. You know? And yes. and was it a challenge for them to kind of adjust to her? You know, thank God, no. She took to them, and they took to her. That's awesome. You know, so that that was that was a blessing. That was a blessing from God. Oh, so it, it's so it's worked also. You. It's it's worked also for for my oldest. Uh, he started um, again. The programs have opened up. He's back in his therapies, and uh, he's working for Uber doing deliveries. Wow, you know, part time. He does not handle cash. I forbid him to handle cash. Everything has to be over the net. But you know, he works about fifteen hours a week. Oh. And it's, it's good for him because he feels like he's independent. He that little air control. of independence and control. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's Sweet. wonderful. Because yeah. especially he is not, he's not seven years old. So he right. needs that. Oh. So he, see, like, like here's an example, if I may, real quick. Um, never occurred to me when I would dress my sons as a guy, I'm going, clean shirt. Here's clean shirt, you know. What Laura would do is she would go to my youngest and offer him a choice. Do you want to put this one, this one, or this one out of three? And she said that this, she did that to make him feel like he had power over his life and some control over his life. Not everything was being done for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a big blessing. That's great. Let me let me ask you this real quick. I don't know if I had asked it before, but will he be able to go out on his own and have oh. an apartment and or when he works and he does the Uber, does how does he get to where he's going and uh, mostly mostly he's walking mm -hmm. and he also takes public transportation. So he does go out on his own. Yes, he's he's older. He's 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 higher functioning. So he's um, uh, not not like my youngest. Okay. okay. He, he did very well in high school. He got honors. Wow. Awesome. Um, very good. He must be proud. I yes. Am. His favorite honor. This is something he worked on for four years. He had a goal from the first day. He wanted to get perfect attendance. Oh. So four years later at graduation, they said, we haven't given out this award in five years. Wow. A big, big medallion for perfect attendance record. That's awesome. I, I, my kid would never get that. And she doesn't have autism. She would never have perfect attendance because <laughs> every day it's, it's I'm, I'm trying to get her to actually go to school. <laughs> oh, oh. Trying to get them to wake up. That is trying to get them to go to school. You know, yeah. perfect attendance. What's that yeah, perfect? That's a dream. Just to wake them up and the alarm be in their ears and it's still dead. Yeah, all day. Come on, it's time. Wake up. Oh, it's time to go. Aren't you out yet? Come on. Oh my goodness, that's amazing. You know what? Um, so because we are crunched for time, um, Norberto, um, I know that the last time you gave us a litany of resources and stuff that you use. So can you tell our listeners some of the amazing resources that you would recommend for other parents um, who may be experiencing this? Um, what can they do? What's available well, um, to them? I heard you talk about the, the, uh, the New Jersey organization. Yes. Awesome. I myself, uh, we live in Manhattan. Okay. Uh, and my boys get their services through YAI, that's the, the Young Adult Institute. Okay. Uh, their website is www.yai.org. They are phenomenal. Okay. Very proactive. Um, you know, it breaks my heart when I see how other people in other parts of the country have to fight to get services for their kids. Why I just walked up to us and basically said, here's a list. Wow. So they, they, it, uh, like I said, you're crunched for time. So yai.org, awesome. Start there. Start there. Start yes. there. Um, also, Google, Google this. Go on Google, just Google um, financial assistance for parents of the autistic. And what you get is a group of philanthropic organizations. And just go through them, because I, I had help a couple of years ago. One of them paid my electric bill. What? I was, yeah, I was, I was behind with Con Ed and uh, way behind. And uh, I sent them a copy of my Con Ed bill. Um, you know, obviously proof that my sons are autistic. And next thing I know, they sent a third party check. They sent a Con Ed a check for seven hundred dollars made out to Con Ed. Awesome. So those awesome. those off those services are there if you search for them. So basically, if you're looking for, first of all, um, 
what we talked about was all the resources and we played you a little bit of the clip from our expert who was here before everybody, Stephanie Flamini from the, the Autism New Jersey. Um, dot org, which is autismnj.org. And um, all the resources are there to look up. And Norberto also just told us about YAI Institute. So that's yai.org as well. Lots of resources. If you're not sure, you start there. Just get on and scroll around. You know, there's so much information at your fingertips. We can't give you everything today, but we gave you a lot in our previous show. Go on there, check it out. There's a wealth of information. Go on these two sites and start there. And guaranteed, if you have questions, ask. Ask of these um, organizations and they will answer your questions and help to forward you along to the right place you need to go. As well as what Norberto just told us, if you need financial assistance, they can also help you with that. So go on Google and look that up, financial assistance, okay? And I'll leave a, a quick tip. Yes. If you buy stuff for your autistic child that is not covered by medical insurance or such, keep the receipts. Ah. You know, things like, you know, your copay for the medicine, uh, if you buy sneakers, clothes mm -hmm. for that child, keep those receipts. Because again, some organizations will reimburse you mm. for those costs. Wow. Even the little estate, two dollar co pays that Dwayne Reed, keep them receipts. Get the two bucks back. Nice pair of jeans. That's a great so. tip. Everything adds up because it could be two dollars at, like you said, at the Dwayne Reed or wherever you're going or Walgreens or I don't know, Walmart wherever you are and you buy some medicine or I don't know what you're purchasing, clothes, shoes, whatever, you keep those receipts because the organization will reimburse you your money. That is fantastic. Norberto, I want to thank you so much. And Denise also, Denise says, 29 years of serving and loving individuals with special needs. So much respect for and support for people that also support them. Yes. Yes. I love that. Thank you, thank you so much, Denise. Thank you, Norberto. And it was great hearing the updates on the boys. Thank and, you, dear. Um, hope the next show definitely. Yes. Yeah, the, the next time I'm going to mark it on my uh, cell phone there. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> next time, mark it. We'll have you come back and we'll chat more in depth again because you we, we love hearing about yeah. them. But I, I didn't even know. know that they're back now and your son is, is doing all that stuff. So that's Uber and all of that. So that's good. Thank you Thank so you much. much. Bye. Have Bye. a great evening. Chat soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, that was so, Miss Reese. Yes, ma'am. So tell every remind everybody about this heat system now and this AC that we're, you know, we're gonna be chatting about. So if you're in the Florida area, if you're in the Florida area and you have some AC work that needs to be done, or you just need servicing, whatever it is to do the AC, call Mr. Steven at um stay cool. AC, and I'm going to give you his information soon. And uh, we're going to put it up on the um, on our web on our page. And you call him at 954 822 4784. All right, so that's Mr. Steven with Stay Cool AC. Stay Cool AC, that is an absolute must in the Florida area. Well, it's an absolute must everywhere you go in the summertime. <laughs> you don't want to be hot up in Florida, not me. I don't know about you, but I don't not to be hot. Yeah, in the summertime, even you know here where we are in the New York, New Jersey area, you better have some sort of AC. Mm -hmm. All right. So, boy, I tell you. So what's our drop saying now? Our drop is- What are we doing now? It's time to talk about you and what you do. It's our business spotlight. Well, girl. well, Miss Reese. <laughs> yeah. Our business spotlight. Hello. Hello. And we feature a business person, business owner, every Monday to talk about their business 
what it is, what they do. So can you come closer to the mic, Miss Reese? Yes. Can you hear me? I hear you now. So we are actually going to feature this week JQ Lee, my girl JQ. Yes. JQ. So welcome, 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 JQ Lee. Good evening. Our business Spotlight, where we are spotlighting you. You. Welcome. Well, I love it. I love it. I love it. Welcome. Thank you, ladies. Are you listening to the radio while you're on here? Turn the turn it off. Don't listen to it. <laughs> well, actually, I'm not. Actually, I'm not. And so I'm gonna switch over because I hear a lot of feedback. I'm actually not. So I'm gonna switch over. Okay. Well, so we have a business spotlight, everybody. And that's what we're doing tonight. And if you have a business, all right, then you reach out to us and you'll be on our business spotlight as well, because that's what we do here. We're going to spotlight you as much as we can. We're spotlighting your business. We're giving and, you five minutes of fame. Yes. And also, you know, we what we're doing for the AC company, um, what's their, our AC sponsor again, Reese? Hey, cool. Stay cool. That's right. I just wanted you to keep on saying the name. <laughs> okay. So just like stay cool, you can be a sponsor of our show. Okay. And we would love for you to sponsor our show. So reach out to us. Okay. And we're going to talk about just the way we talk about stay cool constantly. Stay cool. Stay cool. That's right. Because you have to, especially if you're in the Florida area right? You definitely, you want to have your coolant system working. Okay. So we will, um, do, we will spotlight you and as well as, um, we want you to sponsor us. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. So we're just waiting on Miss JQ to come on. I think she said she was switching over and there she is. There I she am. is. Okay. Her background, girl, it's I love beautiful. It. I know. Oh, I'm having beautiful blue skies for the folks on the radio who are not seeing this right now. Let's <laughs> tell you what the background she has is our amazing business spotlight guest, Miss JQ Lee. Her background has beautiful azure blue skies and these beautiful white floating cotton clouds. I know. Floating in the back is just making me feel so relaxed. This is something you see when you're on the beach somewhere. Just really I am, I'm a high rise lover. So this is, is what is to come. So that's my backdrop. Okay. Uh, is, is that water that I, that it has also, or is just the sky? Yes. It's, it's the beach. Yes. It's the, the water. Mm -hmm. Love rub, it. Rub it in our face, JQ. <laughs> He's in Jersey. Rub it in, rub it in. Yes. Where it's cold. <laughs> oh, oh we well, have to come down to South Florida. Yes. I am jealous. I want some of that nice warmth and the water. Yes, indeed. So welcome, my dear. Tell us about you. Thank you, ladies, for this opportunity again. Um, I am a native Floridian, proud native Floridian. I took my undergraduate degree from Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. I took my graduate degree from Nova Southeastern University and both entailed um, psychology. And so I did mental health therapy for close to 20 years. And then I made a career change. I actually went into financial services and that was just a very interesting decision in and of itself. But when I tell you there are some parallels um, and my background with counseling has definitely allowed me to really understand the psychology behind the decisions of why we do what we do as it relates to our financial backing. And so I have a team of agents that um, assist me with the crusade of making sure that we're touching the lives of families and empowering them in making generational wealth decisions. And so, you know, it's a daunting task when you're coming in to various communities and you're looking to educate people and, and get them to a mindset of understanding that it's not just for other people, but they can actually be at the table as well. But it's also very rewarding when you know that you can go into a family 
and really show them how to make their money work for them. And so that has been um, a passion of, of mine as it relates to this career and the agents who are working with, with myself in just making sure that families are not only protected through life insurance, but through investments as well. Oh. Good. Okay, so um, so you said you made the um, transition from, because I didn't even know that you did that part until the other day when we had an event and I was like told that that was your field. So tell us what is the field, that, exactly what you do now? So as I said, I have a um, Series 6 license. So I'm an investment advisor as well as I am able to do life insurance with families. And so I help them to, navigate financially how to protect their income and how to make their money work for them so you know us we our, our people our priorities are different like how do you get them to realize like you say you do insurance how do you get them to see that it is important for us to build the world by having insurance you know, how do you get them to understand? Because we're focusing on other things when mm -hmm. we're thinking about providing a generational wealth, because that's the thing now. We want to make sure that our kids are good. And, you know, so how do you, con you know, convince them or educate them to let them know that it's important? Great question. You know, a lot of my sitting down with families is, is really having storytelling time with them. Um, I remember growing up as a young girl, my grandmother, um, you know, she worked extremely hard. She actually worked in cleaning other people's homes and yet she still maintained having life insurance. I can remember her telling me to go open the door for the gentleman who would come to get her payment. And so I grew up seeing someone who didn't have a lot of money but she understood the importance behind life insurance. And so now fast forward, I find myself having to go back to those stories mm -hmm. to bring us to this place of saying, we're not a people who depend on GoFundMe's because that's not someone else's responsibility to bury our loved ones. So I actually explain life insurance from an aspect of understanding it is our last love letter to our family. It is your opportunity to share with them that even through my transition, I thought of you. And so it's really about having a conversation with people, getting them to understand that life insurance is so much more than just burial, but it really is income replacement as well as generational wealth building for the family. And mm -hmm. it was interesting, I was having um, a conversation with one of my Jewish colleagues and he did not really know much about the GoFundMe. And we had a conversation and he said he was really, floored by that because for his family, it would be an offense to go out and expect other people to give you money to bury your loved ones. And so when you're talking about having pride for your family, when you're talking about building generational legacy, mm -hmm. it is really to go back and to empower us. I think about, you know, Tulsa, Oklahoma, and just the proud, proud town that was and, and what they were able to do as a united people who took a vested interest in their family. So a part of my conversation is really getting back to the basics and letting the, our people know that, listen, we came from this stock that worked extremely hard and did what they had to do to make sure that the family was cared for. And so just bring, bring you that back. hit something on the net head and I hated this go fun thing. Let me tell you something. I always tell Carol, if they ever put nothing on there about they're doing no Facebook, I mean, go fund for me, take it, it. To me, I will help a person that's medical if they have a go fund for medical. I understand the medical part. But as far as, I mean, I think we all, even if you take out a final expense, which means that's just taking out a policy to bury you. You don't have, if you don't want to leave anything for your family, oh, well, that's not just to bury you. It, it's so why you need insurance you need insurance regardless if you have kids no kid whatever it irks me with this go fund issue it really do and i'm glad you brought that up because you'll see them in the club popping them bottles popping pop pop 
And the next thing you know, oh, such and such passed away. We're collecting girlfriend. Okay, you're wearing Gucci and you're wearing all that. And you can't, you know, and it may sound harsh, but it's not expensive to have a policy. And you don't have to get no $100,000 policy or anything. like. A lot of people think you have to do that. You can get a $20,000 policy, as I said, just to cover your burial expenses. Your family's stressing already the fact that you passed, you know? So I like how you hit that on the, uh, that, that go fund. They need to cut it out. So I have you a know question what? because I recently had uh, that conversation with someone because we did this topic on this show before as well, a couple of times. And we like to stress that for our audience as well, because especially, you know, and the reason we keep on beating a dead horse is because in the black and brown communities, we have to keep on stressing this, right? Because people feel like they have to be rich, you know, to to do this, and this is no help to them at all. So we keep on touching this topic to make sure that folks, especially in the black and brown community, understand this. And someone said to me, it is not cheap. Don't let people tell you that it's cheap. There's no policy that so can you give us just a quick explanation of, give us an idea of how much it could potentially cost, like at a bare minimum? What, sure. what, what could someone in our black and brown community expect? For example, if somebody's working at McDonald's or something, can they afford this? Absolutely. Thank you for the question. Gladly answered. It's important that people understand the younger you are, in getting insurance, the less you will pay for it. Why? Because insurance companies are in to make money as any other business. And so therefore, the less medical issues that you have, your age, all of these are determining factors as to how much you pay. So case in point, if they got a term policy, if you're in your 20s, you could actually get six figures and not even pay over $25. And I'm talking about a $100,000 policy for a 21, 22 year old and they're not even paying $25. Why is that? Because it allows those individuals who, again, who did not wait until 70, 80, or when they're um, experiencing medical issues, things of that nature. There are also policies out there that are guaranteed issue for those who did wait longer and may have medical issues. But as far as insurance is concerned, there is a range and there really are services, and Drea mentioned, made mention of it with the pre-needs. There really are services that you actually can pay into on a monthly basis to make sure that those payment, those um, needs are met. Because when you're talking about burying someone right now, funerals can range from like 10 to 25,000, depending on the, the trimmings of that, of that service. Um, cremations can range about three, you know, a thousand to three thousand dollars for a cremation. So when you're factoring all of that to really give them the understanding of what can transpire. I heard someone say this and I thought it was so powerful. What would the situation in Chicago or New York or Miami where you're hearing about all these shootings, what would their situation be like if those mothers had $100,000 policies on all of those young men? Mm -hmm. Do you know that the lobbyists for insurance, the police, everyone would be getting involved, why? Because insurance companies do not wanna lose money. Right. And so the fact that they would ah, have a hundred thousand dollar policy on those young men, think about how many families would be able to transition out of that situation. Yes. So we've got to begin to think smarter about our decisions and about our ownership. Yeah. Once you have individuals like yourselves, I love this show and what you're doing, you're providing access to the table. So once we yes. get to the table, we have to make sure that we continue to educate and pull up chairs. Yes. We are without excuse. As I said, that's why I always share that, that, that story about my grandmother. We're without excuse to not have insurance. A lot of people have jobs and they'll say, you know what, oh, well, I have insurance on my job. But here's the thing, you don't own that insurance on your job. You actually get a certificate. Your mm-hmm. job owns that. So therefore they determine how much you're gonna get. And guess yeah. what? There is a huge shortfall in the American household. Over 60% are less than um, over $200,000 in a shortfall of how much insurance they should really have. You should really have about five to 10 times what you make because they say it takes about five to 10 years to regroup from losing one of those breadwinners income. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I really love that point that you just made, right? 
Whenever I hear anything, I like to repeat it because we always tell our audience, make sure you have a pen and paper. You know, we, yeah, we know it's outdated because everybody has smartphones or whatever. So whatever you got, a tablet, a smartphone, a smart robot, whatever you got, we just want you to take note of this right now because I absolutely love the point that you just made about educating, right? Yeah. If we are changing the, this is one way because a lot of people in the black and brown communities, we say, why he, we can't get out of this situation? And this is one way people- uh -huh. And you pointed that out just now so brilliantly when you're saying, if all of us start to have these policies and something went down, let's say those mothers the other night, you know, all had a hundred thousand dollar policy on their kids. These institutions now are going to start looking at how much money they're losing. All right. When someone dies, wait a minute, this is going to, I have to pay out a hundred thousand dollars for all of these black and brown folks who have died. They're going to start to want to make changes. And that's right. one way we can affect the system. Never thought about it that way. I never thought of it that way either, but I love that you said that. Yes. Yes. Definitely. And I just had to point that out to, you know, for anybody who's at home listening right now, and you may have missed that point. I just wanted to repeat that so that you can catch that to say, ta-da, that light bulb just went off. So run out and get that. That is your way of contributing to the change that you want to see. That's it. That's it. Love it. Now, um, if you could um, roll back a little bit to a point that you made, you said why um, you said it's wealth building and it's also about generational wealth, right? But the term that you use is, is wealth building and generational wealth. For those folks who are listening who may not really understand why you're saying it's wealth building, can you explain what you mean by that? Yes. So insurance is actually the quickest way to build an estate. And I like to go in, I often um, go to churches and do financial literacy. When we hear words like a state, it automatically triggers and some to think they're talking about wealthy people. Well, insurance is an even playing ground that allows individuals to build an estate through the means of insurance. And so when you're talking about case in point, paying, as I said, with a, with a young man who are 20, you, you're paying, let's say, $25 a month, but they have a $100,000 policy, and let's say they paid up into that policy for only a year. So this is where it becomes an even playing field, that the monies that are amassed through that allows a person to now begin to build that wealth through that vehicle. And so this is one of the reasons why I say it's important that we see insurance not just from the standpoint of paying for burial services, but if it's an opportunity to take your family to the next level and you're now focusing on building an inheritance for your children's children, there's a dynamic that takes place with that because it can actually go even more in depth and we do it um, on our one-on-ones with families when we do financial needs analysis. When you have that lump sum of money, you can actually live off the interest of these accounts. There are some, some insurance policies that have what's called living benefits. And there are actual things that you can do investment wise with that money so that you actually are never touching that money. These are the things that it's imperative that we get to the table and learn versus being intimidated about what we don't know. Because in actuality, what we don't know is actually not only hurting us, but killing us. Yes. We often say knowledge is power, but last year I added one word to that. It's not just that knowledge is power, applied knowledge is power, yes. because you can learn, you can hear something and, and be privy of it, but until you move on it and act on it is when it, it actually takes that effect. So true. That so true is actually acting upon what you're learning and what you're hearing. And so many of us, and I was reading some something before, even for like marketing companies who market to people, they say that you actually, when you see an ad, literally, this is the reason why when you watch television and stuff and you see these commercials and stuff, you literally see it at least 15, 16, 17, 18 times because it takes the human mind at least 12 times 
of seeing that same ad, okay, before we actually respond or even realize that, oh, wait a minute, did I not see that mm -hmm. phone ad before? I saw that car, wait a minute. Then you start to pay attention. So yes, we love to make sure that we are repeating this information over and over and over and over. And I'm so glad that you've said this, living off of the interest people. Yes. <laughs> you can live off the interest of this. Do you understand? Yeah, that's a powerful thing behind compound interest and being able to move from being a instant gratification society and culture because we're, we're the people who stand in front of the microwave, right? When you move from instant gratification to deferred gratification, that's when you begin to get the benefits of the rule of 72 and compound interest. We've got to begin to love allowing things to sit mature and work for us we have been conditioned to work for money but money should actually be working for us and so that's what compound interest does for us yes money should be working for us yes, i 100 percent believe that 100 <laughs> percent i'm Let so me, tired I wanted, of working I wanted, um, wanted to echo on something that you said carol yes um it, it's interesting that you made mention about uh, marketing i was looking at uh in, in my study time today i Oh, I ran across this uh, piece on branding through smell. Mm -hmm. And they were talking about when you go to certain places, when you go to the W or you go to various places, they literally, people don't understand the psychology behind why you actually buy what you buy. Yes. There are people who are, are actually paid millions to know this and to put product in front of you. Just yes. like you said, you know, case in point, you can see a Toll House cookie commercial. You were not thinking about cookies, but all of a sudden now you have to have Toll House cookies. As a matter of fact, you might even leave your house to go and get that. Yes. This is why we have to continue to have these conversations and putting it in front of people because a part of that repetition is the thing that begins to really have it where it goes into beyond the subconscious to now you're actually thinking about it and acting on it. That is precisely my goal. I want to hammer this home until people start to hear it enough times, they understand that they need to start acting on it because it works. And that is precisely what I want to do right now. And like you said, um, there are people who get paid to know this information. They get paid to do this. When you go to the supermarket, you know, you ever notice or any kind of store you go to, to buy stuff, maybe even Target or whatever, there are certain products that they will put, but they put it at the cash register area. You're not going to find it in the back somewhere. It will be so that it's right there when you're just leaving out the store and you're standing there waiting. Wait, yep. That's listen. where the candy bar is. Yeah, listen. <laughs> Bur Burlington gets more money out of me from that long line that they have to get to the register than they get from me actually shopping in the store. Yes. Right. Like it, it, it's the psychology behind it. When you go to the grocery store, they're not going to play fast music. They're going to play slow music. Why? Yes. Because they want to slow you down so that you can begin to see much more. It's very strategic. Even that product placement yes. when you're in the store of where they place products. It, I'm, t I'm telling you, this is really a great conversation to have because it's going to make people more cognizant and aware of truly it's intentional in their marketing and things that they do and what they do for you. I just yeah. learned that right now. I, I had no clue. I've always known that. The music, <laughs> the music being this and, and. Yes. Yes. It's very strategic. People get lots of money. They get big bucks to know this about you. Okay, yes. and to understand this and to cater to you. And you might think, oh, yeah, this is, you know, you may not think twice about it, but they are. Or they did. Mm -hmm. They did. Down you know? to your phone. When you're on your phone and you do searches for various products, and then all of a sudden you see yes. certain products that come up and on your phone. How do they know that I was thinking about? Them? Yes. Yes. Yeah. They learn. It's a learned thing. They learn what you're looking at and what you like. And that's their job to do yeah, that. It's an algorithm. And then they target you with that algorithm. Mm -hmm. You know, this is how it's done. But that's, you know, even though we on the show right now don't necessarily have the algorithm that they have, uh -huh. they big, big, big bucks. 
But the idea is we are a part of the black and brown communities and we know what the black and brown communities respond to and don't respond to. Right. And this is one of the reasons why we keep we on keep using- pushing. We keep pushing this issue because we need to get on this bandwagon. Yes. So in, in essence, this is our way of targeting and, and strategizing to make sure that the information gets out there and that we are also, because we have a platform that we can do that, we are educating folks to say, listen, go out and do this. And I absolutely love, I'm, I'm repeating it again, what you just said just now, this is how we can change the narrative. This is how we can change the institutional behaviors because if these institutions and organizations are realizing that, wait a minute, these people are taking out all these insurance policies and and, that, and then I have to pay them $100,000 a pop every time something happens, or maybe more, depending on how much you can afford, you know, they're not going to want to do that. So changes will be made. Absolutely. So everyone, you go ahead, make sure you, if you've just taken some notes, jot it down, please pay attention, focus. If you're not quite ready yet, just call and you're going to reach out to Ms. J. Q. Lee, ask the questions, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ask her if you're not certain, just reach out, email, and we're going to get your information in a minute. And our folks can reach out, email, go on her site, ask her a question to say, wait a minute. Well, did you, did, did you mean what you just said about such and such and such? Do not be afraid to ask the questions. Okay. Knowledge is power. And we want to empower you to do what you need to do in terms of your investments and making money work for you rather than you're constantly working for money your entire life. And it could start with something small. We used to always talk about the fact that Reese likes her Starbucks coffee. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. If you skip that Starbucks coffee, you might I, be able to. I, I cut down, okay? I had to cut down my Starbucks intake to pay for my insurance. <laughs> That's a sacrifice I made. There you go. And you may have to sacrifice that, that cup of coffee. Starbucks. You may it. have to sacrifice that Starbucks cup of coffee. But isn't I, it worth it to start you know, that generation? Andrea of wealth? said something. Andrea said something that I, I, I thought that I actually lead with as well. Um, a family is going to grieve when you lose a loved one. But we should not be grieving and worrying about how we are going to go on after their passing or even how we're going to bury them. It's a it's a dishonor to the people that we say that we love. Yeah. And so, yes, we are going to grieve, but we should most certainly not be grieving and worrying. True. Yes. Absolutely. And I think about my kids and I, I think about them that if I should pass before them, how you know i don't want them to be stressing or because they're going to be you know missing me already you know so i really don't want to add add extra so i want to make it easier on them and i had this conversation with the two older ones like okay this is whatever mommy what's happening i'm like listen it's a it's a topic that we don't want to talk about but we have to talk about it right so mommy is fine and everything but this is what is going to happen this is who you need to go to and whatever and xyz just right well i tell my daughter because my son he is just going to be a he's not going to be able to concentrate on anything so i tell the one that i know is more responsible which is my daughter she can hold it together but you have to have that talk with them i i, I want to make sure that i'm not going to make them rich but at least they'll have a start they don't have to you understand i want to okay. That for me, I want to build that generational wealth. Right. For and my not leaving a burden, not leaving a burden on the children. Not leaving a burden. If something happens. Yes. Like we said, how do you do you have to go do a, a GoFundMe in order to get the money to for a funeral or something? When I tell you I love Andrea that you said that you actually had the conversation. Um, I, I think we have to really take the stigma off of um, li uh, life insurance and, and what it means. It should really be an empowering conversation. Yes, we want our loved ones to live you know, a long time, but just as life is a part of our, our existence, so is death. And when we begin to really 
respect the process of what that dash means. Like, what did your life mean to the people who you say that you love? And it's so important because think about it from this perspective, ladies. When we lose someone whom we love, you're already emotionally charged. You're already in the grieving stage yes. to, to try to figure out, did they have a policy? Was it active? Where is it located? Who has what? Where yeah. should I take them? Those are things that we can address beforehand. It's, and it's not going to make that person's transition come any sooner. If anything, it makes it easier on the family to have those conversations. And so I really um, am challenging your audience to do what Andrea did with her children. Who is that responsible person and who would be considered your beneficiary? Because those are things that they need to know. We also do estate planning and, and actually creating a will. Because here's the thing, family. That's people, another thing right there. People are fighting for, uh, for pots and pans <laughs> when they close their eyes. Okay, or it's not even buried properly yet, and it, I'm telling you, yep, yeah. it, it happens. It happens. Weddings and funerals, people are very emotionally charged, mm -hmm. and so what if you had all of that information set up where your children are not fighting, your your siblings are not fighting, that people know what your intentions were, even down to how you want your memorial service. Yeah. So that, if that's a conversation that we actually have to begin to really have and really put some respect on that. Like it's not this, this taboo topic because in, in various cultures, it is actually this rites of passage and this, this conversation that they have on a regular. Mm -hmm. You know, they already know, especially with Jewish culture, the same friend that I was telling you I was talking to, the children already knew if grandpa passed, there will be $100,000 set aside for you to go to college, $100,000 set aside for this one to go to college. They already knew that that was put into place for them. So do you think they're going to finish high school? Yeah. But do, so let me ask you, do you do estate planning also? We, yeah. uh, we, we are in conjunction with a company that, that helps you to do the will and, and also set those things up. So that, that is the part of the encompassing process that we have. I do what's called an, an f and a, a financial needs analysis, and I help people to determine what their FIN number is. What that FIN number is, is it's called a financial independence number. Many people don't know their FIN number. What that is, is how much money do I need upon retirement? Because what typically happens is, you know, for us in here in South Florida with the, with the grocery store in Publix, sometimes you're going to, to the Publix and you're you come to this cashier who's, you know, an, an older person and they're not working at Publix because they're bored and they need something to do. Many of them are working because they need to supplement their income yeah. because yeah. social security is not enough for them to live on. And so what that financial needs analysis is a complimentary service that we provide for families. What it does is it begins to now get you in the vein of knowing how much money will I need upon re retirement? And then it helps you to work backwards to get to that number. Mm. I like that. Yes. So everyone, we're gonna give you her information and please reach out. Like we said, there is a stigma a lot of times in the black and brown communities where we feel like, oh, we can't talk about this. If we talk about it, it's gonna happen. If I talk about, you know, preparing my will or this and that, something bad is gonna happen. It doesn't mean that, it just means that you're prepared. Because right. eventually at some point, every single one of us, we don't wanna be morbid or anything, but it is a reality. Yes. So yeah. at some point, you know, and what we do not want to happen is like something unfortunate and sudden, like what ha happened the other night with those mass, mass casualties, you know, shootings and some, you know, you never know. Anything can happen in life. We just need to be prepared and we need to have the conversation with our loved ones. Absolutely. Right? So we thank you. Thank you. Thank so you so much. For thank you so on. much for having me. Okay, so let's get your information. Right, so we can put it on our social platform and yes so I, your, I just put it in your chat Andrea you so let's say. the phone number to reach you is 
4095. And I'll repeat that for our listeners who are listening right now. 954-303-4095. And the website address, can you read that for me, please? Yes. So it's livemore.net and it's forward slash Jaqueta Lee and that's J-A-Q-U a D is in Daryl A L E E. Okay. And so that's actually my landing page. Excellent. So it's livemore.net slash or Jaqueta Lee. And yes. that's J A Q U A D A L E E. Okay, Correct. everybody. So that's the landing page that you can go to for more information. And uh, what's the name of your company? So I actually am a independent agent with Primerica. Okay, got you. Mm-hmm. All right. So definitely, I, I love the information that you shared today. I'm really mm-hmm. appreciative of it. And um, everybody, please reach out to her. And you will get all this information, ask all the questions, write down your questions before you reach out to her and she'll be happy to answer them for you, okay? If you're not certain and whatever questions you have financially, okay? Think about them. Think about what you want to do. Think about maybe questions you wanna ask but you've never asked before. Maybe it's a question you're afraid to ask. Now's the time. Yes. Okay? You're not too young to start. And like she says, sometimes it's better to even start putting away, if you're doing life insurance, start early because it's cheaper. You're younger. You may not have all the health conditions that you have to pay more for when you get older. Okay. So you want to ask all those questions, you know, and she will help you scope the landscape for you. And, and Carol, you if I could say one, one last thing before I, before I leave. Yes. It was one of my desires to make my church one of my beneficiaries. And I wanted my policy to get to a certain amount to be able to do that. And I say this, I wanted to share this because sometimes people feel, oh, well, I'm single, I don't have children or I'm not married. You know, do I, do I still need life insurance? What if our life, our life's existence could carry on in an aspect of giving through our life insurance. You don't always have to be married or have children. I don't, I'm not married, nor do I have children, but it was very important for me to pass it on to my niece and nephew, as well as my church. And so I think we have to really begin to think more um, as a macro versus micro as how we see insurance and what we're able to do with it. You know what? Thank you for saying that because now you've got my wheels spinning as well. So I want to put that in some other terms for everybody who's listening as well. Maybe you're like me. I like things even broken down into the two-year-old level that I understand it. (laughs) So um, I love that you just said that because I hadn't really considered that for those people who are single, you don't have any children. You know, you never really think of, you know, a lot of times when we think about celebrities, right? And we say, oh, and you hear them, they're contributing to their favorite charities or their favorite organizations and this and that. And you're thinking, oh, that's for rich people. That's celebrity stuff. I don't have money to contribute all this stuff. Maybe you like dogs. You want to contribute to the ASPCA. You want to contribute to, you know, UNICEF or any organization that helps poor people. Maybe you're interested in Alzheimer's like I am, you know, it's whatever charity or organization that you're interested in. And like Jaqueta, JQ, you just said your church, different people have different organizations that you might want to contribute to. So if you don't have children, you can still do that. So Mm -hmm. you have a life insurance policy, which I hadn't really thought of before. That's your your contribution so when when because i'm going to say when because we're all humans and we are all mortal okay so when the time comes that you are no longer here that's a way that you can contribute yeah absolutely to your favorite charity or organization rather than just leaving your estate or whatever monies you may have in your bank account for the government to just confiscate absolutely that is a good point Oh, I love that. 
Thank you, ladies. Thank you for your time. And oh, for thank you so you. much. Hope you, I hope you'll come back another time when we talk about because we talk about this. As we say, we want to we want to keep driving this point home. So people. we talk about it quite a lot. So we would love to have you back another time um, in our business spotlight. And we continue to talk about this until folks in the black and brown communities, they really, they hear it to death. We want them to continue to hear They're it. They're going to be like, you know what? I'm so tired of hearing about that. Let me just go get some, some, let some. Just, yeah. Let me call her up. Let me just call JQ <laughs> and get some insurance. Cause I'm this- tired of these girls con- constantly <laughs> talking about this <laughs> stuff. There must be something good about it. Call JQ. You know Next time, I would love to talk about some case studies when you really understand how much companies are paying out to families. Like, it, it is really, really worth the conversation. So thank you all again for your time. And then, of course, next time, maybe dining conversations and more. Oh, yes. Oh, you, you know you have to put that out there before you go. Put, please plug that in. I missed it the last time, but I will be at the next one. So let the people know what about dining conversation. You can't leave without telling about that. The, the beautiful Andrea with her her spot, her e girl spot. I which I really love the concept of it. Um, listen, I tell people all the time. People are doing wonderful things in our communities, and so oftentimes we're so enamored with these celebrities. But yeah. when I tell you the grassroots effort and what people are doing in our communities, I think we should continue to make sure that you get your shout outs. And so, Andrea, thank you for providing a space where pe- women feel safe, where they feel empowered. Like I actually had an opportunity to attend your event before I did mine there. And here's what happens when you have that type of, of setting. The synergy is so magnetic. We're here, a group of women coming together who all don't all know one another. But because the atmosphere was so inviting and engaging, literally being poured into at this event. And so for those of you all who have not been to e-girl to her virtual spot, you, uh, well, you actually need to definitely contact her because that's where I had my first dining conversations with JQ. It is inspired by the New York feel where you're having, you know, New York is known for the dinner parties. And I've always loved dinner parties. I, I'm a certified event planner, um, taking a little, vac- a little break from that because I'm working on my financial um, literacy business. But there's something about us coming together over great food and just pouring into one another and having enlightening conversation. And so it was truly a success. We're doing it every two months. Our next one will be at Panties in Aventura, May 28th. And uh, for more information, it's the same number. I can give you all again, 954-303-4095. And, looking and when, you put, when you put your flyer out, we'll put it out on our page. Okay, awesome, awesome. Looking forward to you all, ladies. When so, I saw the setup, I was like, oh my God, I can't believe I missed it. That <laughs> intimate, is it had an intimate kind of feeling and I wasn't even there. I'm telling you, so I can't even imagine. And you know, I created these conversation starter cards. So- it actually triggered the conversation and people would just echo and, and share in the conversation. So we just got to get back to the basics for those who may not be club goers and different things of that nature, but you want an intimate setting that is enlightening and, and pours into you. This is, this is your event. Yes, definitely. I will definitely push it when you have, when you start um, advertising the, the, the flyer. Definitely. So, JQ, if you could just drop your email there in the chat for us, I would really appreciate it so we can put you in our contact list here as well. Absolutely. Um, for the show, because we would love to have you back. That would be amazing. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me. It was truly a pleasure. Yes, ma'am. All righty. Bye, ladies. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Yes, that was Miss JQ. I'm listen. I meet so many people. I've been meeting. I'm telling you, it's awesome. All these. So tell everybody what she was talking about before we pop off the radio. Tell I, everybody I what know. she was talking about. Your space. Yeah. I always have to plug your business. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> yes, I have a oh, my business. Oh, the co-sharing workspace. It's a. Yes. Uh, 
space for, you know what, it's turning out to be women that are coming there and just doing their thing, meet, networking with other females. It's just a place for us women to brainstorm right? You know, we have our businesses, what next? And talking to other female entrepreneurs gives you ideas, you know, tips, how they run their stuff, you know? So it, it's really, I'm meeting so many fabulous women. And as JQ said, we always concentrate on the famous women or the people in the limelight, yeah. Michelle, Oprah, but no, there are women out there that's busting their behind and doing their thing. Like, right. I, you know, they're just doing their thing. And that's what I like want. Like us. Like us. Like us. I, want, I want people to know that, yeah, the little people out there, they're doing their thing too. So support them, you know, support Absolutely. them. Yes, absolutely. There are other folks, and you have this wonderful space. Everybody, it's the work bar. You know the the work bar bar. Yes, it's called the work bar. It's work in bar. Florida, in Coral right. Springs, Coral Springs, Florida. Yes, and it's open seven days a week. You can come in if you you want a spot to meet with your client or you want to just do some have some quiet time and concentrate you get complimentary wi-fi you get your coffee tea snacks i mean water you get you have the whiteboard you can do what you you know jot with whatever it's like an office setting but you just bring your, your laptop basically and if you want you we actually have wine also you know so you know how I do it. You, I have to have a little wine there. So that's my spot yeah. for Springs. And it's a beautiful space. And yeah. I keep on saying that every week. It's such a gorgeous and professional space that, you know, if you, like, like Reese said, if you want to have a pop-up shop, if you want to yeah. have um, a, like Reese's yeah, been having coming empowerment up. lunches and meetups and yeah, stuff, meet you up. have a client, a business client that you want to meet, but you don't have the professional space yourself. You can go there. She has the space for you with Wi-Fi, this and that, everything there. Everything and Starbucks have, even the coffee is Starbucks and we have Starbucks Dunkin' Donut just to show you that, you, you know, you, yeah. but the only thing that you not, you, you don't get and your that, your sip and paint events we just had a sip and paint saturday anna was there saturday with her girls we had a nice time it was awesome so I we saw you posted it online it awesome that, you know it. i'm just giving people ideas of what they can hold in that space that you have, Listen, have a, so they want to reach out to you let me plug you girl okay plug me girl plug you're me. not you're not doing it right awesome. let me do it for you okay <laughs> <laughs> so reach out to Reese. okay so if you want this professional space in coral springs florida she has the space for you it's gorgeous and you have a site where people can book the space if yes. they want to what e is your site please it's called egirlfridayva.com and you'll e see girl that. friday the letter v a.com and you'll see all the different areas that you can and you can book we That's even right. have a let me tell you how the space we had a a uh, 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 sewing teacher they had their class there over the weekend where they're teaching people to sew yep so see so it's like a month, it, yeah so anything we can have any event there any class any meeting just give me a call and i'll take care of you there you have it give her a call it is right there any any type of event you want and yes. I loved it when you even have the pop up shop, the pop up events, and people yeah. their business. One coming up, up candle making. Set up their their booths and all of yeah. that. Love We're it. having a candle making class. She's doing a candle making class. So if you want to learn how to make candles, I will put the information out for people who are in Florida. They're having a candle making class there too at the end of the month. There you go. Mother's Day, Mother's Day, um, pre Mother's Day candle making. So yes. There you have All it, everybody. All kind of stuff happened there at the work bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Okay, my dear. So. We had you another, wanna... according to Miss um, Carol, we had another awesome show. It was awesome. I enjoyed myself tonight. As you can you know see, it. I am up. I'm still up. 
and you're still bright eyed and bushy tailed girl. But normally I'd be like, okay, I'm done right now. Man, this CPAP machine is doing wonders. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> Oh my God, I forgot. Yes, Mark, I do have a little bit of scotch. My cousin know me. Yes, 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 yes. Um. So Denise mm-hmm. says, please say the name again. E-Girl Friday, the work bar. It's, it's based in Coral Springs. E-Girl Friday, work yeah. bar, based in Coral Springs, Florida. Yeah. So if you, any type of event that you want to have, of course you know, of a certain caliber. Okay. We want to keep it, you know, manageable. <laughs> certain types of events. I don't, I don't think you're going to have the male yeah. review. Well, knowing you, you never oh, know. Lord, yeah. I that. may come up one Monday and say, hey, it may never know. I came up, up I may come up one Monday and be like, we got, you remember Chippendales? Why did I even say that? I should not have said that. <laughs> This is Reese now, okay? Nothing, nothing. It's off limits for Reese. Okay? It's off limits for me, okay? Why did you say that? So if I say that, they're going to be chipping nails. Everybody like, yeah, that's Reese. I'm not surprised. <laughs> I don't know why I even said that. That's why you. you and you, oh, my goodness. I, should I am that. crazy, so yes. I should have known better. Well, all right, my dear. So everybody reach out to her and thank you so much. And as usual, I'm just going to say, you guys, I'm a voiceover artist. The name of my company separately from here is called Lights Action Voiceover. So if you're looking for voiceover, you know who to reach me, the one with the mouth. All right, Carol, Lights Action Voiceover. Check me out on YouTube, on Instagram, Facebook, same thing, LinkedIn. Lights, action, voiceover, everybody. And she's really good at it. Thank you. Thank you. I want to hear from you guys. Whatever business you have um, and you're looking for voiceover for, maybe you need a little, maybe you need a commercial. Maybe you need a professional phone system. Whatever your needs are, you need some product um, advertising, reach out to me. All right. You Maybe you have a book um, and you need somebody to do your audio book. Reach out to me. All righty. So we love you guys. We love being here. Thank you every- so much for having us in your space tonight. And thank you, cuz, for listening to me. He's always telling me, reminded, reminded. So thank you for being a supporter of my crazy family. They know I'm crazy. And thank everybody out there for just rocking with us and keep rocking every with week. Us. Every, every week. week. Every and week. our amazing sponsor, Stay Cool AC. Stay Cool AC. All right. So we'll catch you next week. Same time. AC, we love you. We love you for sponsoring us. Everybody else, hit us up. Okay? Yep. You can be our sponsor too. And we will talk about you. Talk about you. Yes. <laughs> we love you for being with us, everybody. We'll be back next Monday. Same time, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come on back and be with us. We love you all. We know that you're listening and you're checking us out on MyTurnRadio.com at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time or on our Facebook page, our Let's Connect Facebook page on our live where you can see us cutting up and knacking the fool. We love you, everybody. We thank you. This is the show called Let's Connect, the show where you find... More passion. Excuse me? Did I say more passion? (laughs) Excuse me? Maybe we need to run that again. This is the show called Let's Connect, the show where you find more compassion. Can you say that a little louder? More compassion. Thank you. More empathy and less less judgment. judgment. Don't judge me, people. Okay. I am judging you. We we do have passion, but you know the show is more than just passion. I know that's that's what you got on your mind. You see, you see what you got on your mind. Yes. You talked about this review, this male review of Chippendale, and all you can think about is more passion. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mess. Yes. We love you, everybody. Bye. Bye. Oh my God.